Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. everyone, welcome to our show, Welcome Keen. My name is Agis Sorsosimo and today we are going to talk about English education to international students. Keen Community Education have been, has been offering just an amazing, wonderful program for immigrants. If you are new to the area and you don't know English, but you want to start your career, you want to start your a new life here, this is the best place to go and you will thrive. Today I have two very amazing and special, extraordinary guests. Um, ESL educators from Kin Community Education, Julie Moulton. Hello. And uh, Marcia Contarino. Such a pleasure to have you in our studio today. Thank you. Thank you. It's Welcome. good to be here. Welcome. Um, so, how are you guys doing today? Very well. Very well. Yeah. Excited to be here. I am excited to be here. I love talking about this. Yeah, and I'm just enjoying the end of summer here in New England. We finally got our New England summer and school starting a little bit. So just enjoying the, these last few days. Wonderful. How's your summer? Fabulous. Warm? Yeah. Warm. Wet. Uh, <laughs> hot, hot. Hot and wet. What an interesting summer it's been. Right. right. But it's okay. So Julie, tell me please a little bit about yourself. I was born in Keene um, at Elliott Community Hospital when it was in a building that's now owned by Keene State College. Um, and I've lived most of my life here. I have a husband and no kids. Um, and I was a teacher. I used to teach sixth grade. And now I teach English as a second mm -hmm. language. How about you, Marcia? Well, I have been in Keene for quite a while, but my family's from New York City. I grew up in Africa and in England, and um, I love to travel. I taught um, high school for 30 years and retired, and then began volunteering at KCE, mm -hmm. um, actually um, doing the high set and in the jail, and then, um, and then I was recruited to, to teach, and um, I have three children, and I love Dancing, you know that. <laughs> yeah, we know that. We know that. <laughs> and biking and um, so many things. So, Julie, when did you start teaching ESL? In Keene? In Keene. Here? Mm -hmm. I started this, um, I'm about to start my eighth school year. Wow, that's pretty cool. It is. It's the longest you time. Have I've lot of in one job. Inter mm. You have met a lot of international students. I certainly have. And people. You probably made a lot of friends. Absolutely. So, tell me what did inspire you? to become an ESL teacher? Well, I became an ESL teacher because that's what the United States Peace Corps told me they wanted me to do. My husband and I went to Mongolia in 2007, from 2007 to 2009, and I had been teaching middle school English and science before that, so it was a f natural fit for me to go into teaching English. So I did it there for two years. I taught mostly middle school and then some smaller adult classes came back here for four years and um, subbed in the Keene schools. And then my husband and I then did Peace Corps again. We went to Zambia for two years and again I taught English. And um, when we came back from Zambia, I just was looking, I was started subbing again and then I happened to be, I think I was on indeed.com one day and I saw this job posting for Keene Community Ed teaching ESL, and I said, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's there it is, destiny. that's what I'm supposed to do. So I applied, and it was perfect, and it continues to be the really best is. job I ever it's, had. Yeah, the best teacher ever. Oh. <laughs> Marcia, how about you? What did inspire you to? Well, um, I retired after teaching 30 years, and um, I like doing service and volunteering, so mm -hmm. that's how I got involved with um, Keene Community Ed. Um, both of my um, sets of grandparents are immigrants, so I grew up when I was young in a home where Spanish was spoken, mm -hmm. and and having lived abroad, I've always been interested in other cultures. Um, and so um, I just really enjoyed it. And then I was asked to come on board, and it's just been a great experience. So if you wanted to explain to people who are not from here, like me, international people, immigrants who come from different country, and uh, we are new to the area, and we would like to find out some kind of help to get the English education, what would you tell 
such a person, what is uh, English as a Second Language program? Meaning, what kinds of things do you do in right. the program? Right. Not necessarily how to get into right. it. Right, not how yeah. to get into it, but what is it about? Like, why would you like to apply for the right. program? Well, I think there are many levels that it can help people. One is often immigrants are isolated or don't have contacts or need support systems. And so um, King Community Ed is really a family. And there's it a lot is. of diverse experiences. And there are people who have navigated their way through a lot of um, you know, the obstacles to getting housing or right. um, you know, just learning things. So that's there. And also, um, what's wonderful is the program works with people at whatever level they're at. Right. Um, so it really is tailored, even within a particular classroom. Right. Um, and there's no pressure. Um, the people there really want to be there, and they're really eager to learn, which makes it really satisfying for us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I taught high school, and although I love my students, <laughs> many of them did not want to be there. So that is a whole different. So Julie, how, how do you apply for, uh, to that program? Is it how? Yeah. What is it? What do you do to be there? Like in that family? Yeah. How do you join that family? All you have to do is ask, and you're in. If you if you're a person who who grew up with a, a different first language as a child, and so English is not your first language, so it can be you've never ever even tried to learn English before. We have some students like that. We have students who have who studied in schools where they, their classes were in English, in other countries, but they don't understand American culture, certain things, or traditions, or American idioms, American, right. the way we use language here is not the same as right. it's used if you are taught by British American speakers, Correct. or Indian American speakers. Um, so all you have to do is contact King Community Education, which is on Maple Avenue in the old Jonathan Daniels building, and just say you'd like to take ESL classes. You make an appointment to take um, an, an intake test, which just tells us whether you should be in the beginner class, the intermediate class, right. or the advanced class. Right. And then as soon as the test is finished, you're ready to start, wherever right. it makes sense for and you to be. And I go to that school, and I, what I love about that school, it's just not, the school doesn't focus only on the English education, but it's the whole thing. It's complex. It's the culture. It's the traditions. It's the slang. It's yeah. it, it's 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 about everything. Because I feel if you just know the language, it's not complete. You need to know the whole mm -hmm. picture. Then you, your English is much better, and Absolutely. you understand things Absolutely. better. Absolutely. And idiosyncrasies of the English language that even if you speak English really well, right. but you've never lived here. Exactly. Exactly. And <laughs> you that know how that is. Is. that's what the most beautiful thing about King right. Community Education because you get to know and experience things from a different angle. Yeah. So what do you like the most about working at uh, Keen Community Education? Well, if I'm <laughs> honest, <laughs> the potlucks. I mean. <laughs> food, food, of course. You know, food is a really important element of community building and that, that I would say that community building is equal to um, English language improvement skills at King Community Ed. I mean, we really do mm. our very best to make sure that everybody feels like they're a, an integral part of the organization and, and the food community. And like gets people together. Exactly. Connects people, right? And we, we share stories when we have these potlucks and people talk about, you know, my grandmother taught me how to make this and it's really important in our culture to cook it in this way or to eat it at this time. Right. So and what we, does it mean, you know, to yeah, our culture? What and we right. don't want students to lose their culture. Right. right. I mean, that's one of the best things is learning about other people's cultures right, yeah. and being able to keep your own culture exactly. and then you have to be assimilate. here and learn yeah. like English and all that stuff, but you still need to keep your your mm -hmm. personality, like your traditions right, and your yes. culture. And that's really important too because like I think you all just alluded to it that we're not the students that come are not only learning about American culture, they're learning about lots of cultures. Right. I <laughs> Which mean, is that the whole amazing. world. Yeah. That's the whole world. Yeah. Especially when we have like big, pot, big potlucks and, yep. and people mm. come and it's just absolutely an amazing experience. So, uh, Marcia, you have been working just for one year, but mm -hmm. what challenges do you face uh, working with immigrants? Well, I just want to say, first of all, before the challenges, that they, the people that I have, the students I've had, I've been the loveliest, you know, 
most hardworking people, but often they have um, issues with transportation, they might have child care issues, right. they might have other issues so that it's difficult to attend regularly, right. and so planning a lesson and then having people not show up, not because they're not interested, but just life gets in right. the way is one of the difficulties. And I think because there are different nationalities and different levels, it's you know trying to make sure that we're meeting um, the needs of all people. You know, you know, maybe some people really are interested in writing or need grammatical skills, where other people ha are really far advanced for that. So, how do you do that so that everybody gets a little of something that they need? Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, great. Julie, and um, you've been working there for eight years, you said. So tell me, uh, how many students do you have at school, and what are their nationalities? Mm -hmm. So that changes all the time. <laughs> right. One interesting thing, people, people, ever since I've been working there, will ask me, so what's the dominant language outside <laughs> of English? And we've never really had a dominant language. Right. Um, everyone used to say, must be Spanish, and I'd say, nope, nope. there is no dominant. Nope. We have probably, at any given time, at least 10 or 12 different languages, native languages, spoken by our wow. students. Um, right now, it just happens to be that we do have a dominant language, and it is Spanish, just in the last couple of years. But we, I assume that will continue to fluctuate, because it always does. Um, and, and we've got organizations, local organizations now, that are actively bringing refugees and asylum seekers right to Keene, and so that that sort of directs language, the number of languages that we have spoken to. But I would say right now, probably 12 or so different um, languages, but we have people from at least 10 different countries. At this moment, At this right? moment, yeah, yeah. yeah, at least. At least. Yeah. yeah. That's what makes it like so beautiful. Yeah. Right? It's like a yeah. Mixed yeah. South America, Central America, um, Af India. do we have any from Africa right now? I don't think so. Um, but we did. But India, Ukraine. Southeast Asia, yeah. 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 Poland. Eastern Poland. Europe. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. We've had students from Canada. I mean, we've from all over the place. Marcia, tell me, um, you said that you have, um, you know, people with different levels of English and sometimes you uh, get students that they don't speak English. So how does it look, how does it look like, how do you teach people who don't know how to communicate, like you need to start everything from scratch and you don't, right. you don't understand what they're saying, how do you guys communicate? Well, I'm going to speak briefly on that and turn it to Julie because okay. I do think that teaching beginners is much more difficult than people who are intermediate which is what I teach because they do have some English skills mm -hmm. so um, I'm, I'm thinking that's the way it is. Um, we, I use actually um, a lot of sometimes movement and games you know, um, kind of a universal um, thing where people understand gestures and then, um, you know, we, we try to get a core vocabulary that mm -hmm. we can communicate with. Um, but, you know, fun is a universal language. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and if you're having, right? yeah, music. And if you're having fun, you know, you relax, you, you're less self-conscious, you try things. and. A wonderful thing there is that, that prospective students should know is that there is not homework and there is not grading. Ex right. You know, there's the intake test and assessing at the end of the year, both for the purposes of the program and to help you be where you should be. Right. There's but no there's pressure. not stress in that way. Right. Right. So, and with the intermediates, I mean, I use, um, you know, online resources that are geared maybe to a lower grade if they were mm -hmm. English students, mm -hmm. um, you know, or English students would be at a higher grade than they are, and so just adapting various things, sometimes playing a children's version of a game or reading, um, we, we read Charlotte's Web this year <laughs> together. And there was actually a lot of vocab that was right. elevated, right. but a lot of it they understood. So I think Julie could answer that really beginning, beginning question much better yeah, than I. I do teach very beginners, very people who have not 
really studied English. Right, like I know all. we had a, a, a family from Ukraine, mm -hmm. they escaped from the war and mm -hmm. they didn't know English at all and then they applied to uh, KCE mm -hmm. and then what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's an awful lot of pantomime using using your hands, using facial expressions, using your body, a lot of, there's a, there's a, a technique called total physical response which just means that for, for every time that it's possible to incorporate movement with language, it's a great way to really get it cemented into your brain. Every time you can use more than one sense to help mm -hmm. yourself learn something, one sense at a time, it's more likely to stick. So we do a lot of that kind of thing, um, you know, for learning any kind of verbs, we do them <laughs> if they can be done. Um, and I use a lot of flashcards, a lot of repetition, a lot of games, mm -hmm. pictures, a lot of pi lots mm -hmm. and lots yeah, of pictures. Yeah, yeah. Um, I try to draw on the board, and we all laugh about <laughs> yeah. my drawing <laughs> skills. Um, and they and we just repeat things a lot, so yeah. that enough so that you get to the point where you don't have to think really about what you're saying right, anymore. Right. So a lot of students working with one other student or small groups and I have assistant teachers in my class and they also help um, facilitate those small groups um, and believe it or not it does work you know a lot of people are shocked to, to know that that I don't speak a different language with them mm. that it's only mm. English right. and I teach right. only in English but it's absolutely possible and it's possible so I want to ask you a question right now because so you start in September, mm -hmm. let's say you start in September and they don't speak English and then at the end of the year they they, they do speak English, they can communicate, mm -hmm. like how do you feel about it? Like, do so you feel fulfilled about it? I feel fulfilled because they feel so good about it. I do not take credit for that. I will take credit for helping to create an, an environment where they feel they, they can have confidence. Mm -hmm. and um, where they feel comfortable enough to try. And then after that, it's all them. So if the, the students who learn English the fastest are the students who are most willing to take risks. Yes. And this yeah. is true right. not just with ESL, yeah, but yeah. All, all classrooms. Right. And then um, if they they're also the students who, who they start to feel comfortable coming to class. They, they start speaking in class. They start speaking to each other in class. That gives them more confidence when they step outside right. to talk, to start talking to people, and that's where they learn. Mm -hmm. That's how you learn a language. I, I mean, I've heard people say, I probably shouldn't say this, talk myself right out of a job, but I've heard educators say, you really can't teach a language. You can only learn a language by putting yourself in situations that you right. need to, to right. use it. Right. And they bring a lot of competencies with them. They do. I mean, so, so like when they bring their food in, there's so much richness in there and they're explaining it or showing. Right. Yeah. So they have a lot of competencies. And one quick thing was um, Ruslan, uh, Ruslana came mm -hmm. to the house and with no English skills and we played Pictionary. And you know, I could see having left her country, the sadness in her. But then she got, she forgot about right. that and she was playing the game and then they got the answer right, you know, and some of us didn't. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, she was able to just kind of relax into it and just and communicate feel, better yeah, and of feel that. good right, about right. that. Yeah. That's what I feel. That's what it is about the school. Like you go there and you feel so connected with so many different international people that they, they have the same experience. They have the same um, um, perspective or different perspective, but you go there and you forget that you are in a different country. <laughs> you forget that you don't speak English, that you speak with the accent. You feel like you are in the family. And I think that's what's wonderful about that school. And that just gives the courage to go outside courage, to, yeah. uh, of school and just, and just speak because you know you can. Mm -hmm. and, but the school gives you the basis, like that's where you start, and then you can just open your wings and, mm -hmm. and fly. Yeah. Um, so tell me, do you guys do you have any funny uh, stories um, about teaching ESL or like <laughs> interacting with international students? Well, Julie is funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> Julie, you don't have any funny stories. <laughs> well, I know that my students laugh at very me a lot. Very serious. <laughs> you're, you're just, just very serious. Um, I don't, you know, I, I really can't think of specific stories, funny stories, but I will say that, yeah, we do, we laugh constantly, constantly. And I make mistakes a lot and laugh at myself. And that allows my students to feel okay about making mistakes. Exactly. So we all laugh at each other exactly. all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it never feels bad. It never feels like a mean laugh. It feels like, yeah, we're laughing because we've all done that. Right. Whatever mm -hmm. the mistake was, right. we've all mm -hmm. done that or something right. really very much like it. So um, We laugh a lot too, and I know that when we're doing things, um, there was some testing going out in the, in the main room, and they had to shut all the doors because we were having too much fun. <laughs> right, that, that, that school is absolutely amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. Do you, Julie, do you, um, what have you learned um, personally and professionally from immigrants? Because uh, they bring different, different things to school, like not just physically, but like different experiences, different uh, perspectives, different thoughts, different, different things. Yeah, um, so I would say that personally, one of the things that I've learned is that when people, even when people come from very different backgrounds, if, this goes back to what I was saying before, if you can help create an environment where everybody feels equal and safe and safe and safe, yes, that um, they really truly can thrive. Thrive, mm -hmm. and um, so that's been a wonderful thing for me to learn. Um, and professionally, because of the, because of the things that Marcia was talking about with my students having a lot of other. Um, responsibilities outside mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the classroom. Uh, I've had to learn to have different kinds of expectations right. as a teacher and what I... To be more humble. <laughs> oh, that hasn't happened. <laughs> but we didn't teach you that. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> no, I was already as humble as humble as <laughs> um, No, but to have different expectations in terms of what they might want from the class and understanding that what they might want really is community. More than actual hard skills, although there are, I do have plenty of students too who really are there for hard skills. And I need to be able to, so Marcia said that there's no homework. Well, there really isn't required homework, but some of my students want homework. Mm. And so we can give that to right. them. We can really do things at the level that students seem to want or say that they right. want um, so that and that's been a great learning um, mm. experience. experience for yeah. me so. and well I was going to say that personally for me um, I think it's not so much what I've learned but what's reinforced is is what people want is a sense of belonging and right. well, it doesn't matter where you come from right. you want to you feel want to safe belong, and you, you want, want to belong, belong and you mm -hmm. want to contribute and you want to and i find that the students there contribute so much to the community and um, so personally and also come some come from very difficult circumstances yeah. and despite that they seem to come in with a smile or to appreciate things and professionally i think for me what i maybe have learned is is just that um, I can take what I know and spin it around and do something new or different with it. You know, I taught for 30 years just straight English, but there's many things that I different. can take that's from different. and from life. Mm -hmm. So professionally, um, I don't know, I think so much of it is about the connection and giving people just the opportunity, opening the door right, um, right. for them and providing them with what they need. And, no, and that's, yeah. that's a huge help, yeah. that is yeah. such a huge help, especially when you're so isolated, when you mm -hmm. have no family, you move from a different country, that's right. like having the feeling that you belong is the most wonderful thing mm -hmm. ever and that's what the school provides. Mm -hmm. Julie, um, can you tell me a little bit about um, accomplishments of your students, like maybe the advanced students? 
<laughs> well, I'm just the beginner. Well, look at Aggie sitting here. Exhibit A. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I mean, could you have imagined yourself? No, I couldn't even doing imagine myself this? doing it in Poland. Yeah, like <laughs> right. I couldn't, right. and that's just, that's that's what's so wonderful about that school. And but I could talk about that school forever because I have done and experienced and have seen so much because of that school. That like, I mean, the first thing that I talk about is that school to everybody. <laughs> But I know there's other students that they have accomplished oh, a lot. Yeah. So, and again, going back to the feeling belong, like a sense of belonging and and feeling like you can trust the people that you're with and step out of what's comfortable and and starting to build confidence. So I, I something I feel really good about is that some of our students have gone on just to get jobs, which right. they're not necessarily careers, right. but they're jobs that they wouldn't have gone, they wouldn't have even tried if they right. hadn't mm -hmm. been able to be in, have the experience of classes and starting to develop that confidence. And they wouldn't even know about careers like that. Like They, they might not right. even know about mm -hmm. it, right. Because right. KCE also provides, like an adv uh, they advise yes. um, how, yeah, to, we do. how to find your career. Yep. Like how we have to, a career counselor. Right, yep. right, yep. right. So that, that's a huge help as well for uh -huh. people. Uh -huh. And yeah. we also have a student who did the MBA. Yes. Right? Like I remember She's when she moved her here, MBA that she, was, she was so shy and yeah. she was kind of depressed and she felt isolated and, and very lonely. Mm -hmm. And then slowly she's like she started to come to classes and, and like she opened up and she started to thrive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. She's mm -hmm. getting her MBA. Yeah. I have a beginner student. Um, she's absolutely a beginner. And she's started to volunteer at Rise for ch children. It's a ch infant child care. And, and she School was a program. child, she was a teacher in her native yeah, country. Yeah, in her native country. And that's one of the obstacles for many of these immigrants is that they have skills right. that they would love to be using, but yeah. because of whatever regulations right. or laws we have here. But, you know, the one of the students came to the a station just to intern and then ended up with a show. We have another student from Venezuela who opened right. her own business. Right. Um, like and we have students from Ukraine and they had a wonderful career and mm -hmm. uh, they were thriving in their own country and then the war started and they had to leave the country right. and they have to start everything from the very beginning. Many students like yeah, that, that's not yeah. just from Ukraine. Right, but right, countries, right. That's yeah. just an example, yeah. but that's just a lot of really, really difficult situations and and, and the KC opens the door for everybody and everybody can just find mm -hmm. a community that, that that's, stays together. So uh, what would your students um, tell us about the school? What do you think they think about the school? <laughs> well, um, my experience just from this year is that they really look forward to being there. And if one of the other students doesn't make it, they're a little sad because they wanted to right, see that person. Right, right. Um, and um, they, I think they would say that they're accepted at the level they're at and that they can work on, whether it's pronunciation or it's, mm -hmm. you know, understanding tenses of verbs or just coming in and saying, I have to fill this form out or I have to do something and I need help with it, that, that whatever, you know, and that it's these community celebrations, and Julie does a lot of field trips, are really, <laughs> really great. Uh, you know, I mean, they really just expose right. uh, people um, right. to to many different experiences. Right. That was my another question. Like, well, do you guys do anything <laughs> outside of school, or do you just sit and like, study? <laughs> well, ninety percent of the time, we're sitting and studying. I would say ninety-eight, and 98. it's so strict and it's so hard. <laughs> I have to yell at the students all the time. Sit down. Uh, we rarely just sit. There's always, um, you know, we do learn and we learn what, what the students say or what I can see they need to practice. But yes, we, I do believe that we need to, to get out and experience things in the area. Yeah, so. we have done so many we things really we went we go hiking we we went to conquer to the um to the state, the state house, house. Yep. we went to and the prison and the planetarium the jail, house. The jail yeah. house. exactly yeah. we went we went to uh, to uh, portsmouth to, yep. uh, to strawberry bank or strawberry yeah. bank salem uh, right and we had a politician um yep. uh, visiting us yes, right joe shapiro, joe shapiro. Yeah. Yep. and we learned about the government and how right. everything works and we had uh, the budget um the budget 
specialist yeah. who helped us like right and a lot of um, a lot of wonderful meetings and like international women's day or yeah. thanksgiving gatherings and all that stuff and yeah. that gives us chance to experience also american culture to see things from out, outside the box right the larger and, picture right. and also speakers coming in like mm -hmm. from the domestic violence center mm -hmm. or, right yeah right. coming into like, the building right. like we, we yeah. have um, yeah we have learned a lot so Thanks to that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one more question: <laughs> Where is the school located? And I know I know that you mentioned that before, but like I just want to make sure everybody knows where the school is located yeah. and um, and how to just become a student. Mm -hmm. So it's two two twenty seven Maple Avenue. Um, it's the old Jonathan Daniels Building, and it's right next, basically right next to the the Supervisory Union office which is just on the other side of the Keene Middle School. So right. it's five minutes from downtown Keene. And you can just go there and go in and say, I'm interested in taking ESL classes. And they will set up an appointment for you to take a test, or maybe they can even do it right then. It's a very quick test, like maybe less than half an hour probably. And then they'll tell you what level you they suggest um, for you and then you can start right then the next day or if, if the class is going on that day I've had students come in the <laughs> halfway through class and right. join the class. I would say yeah. a couple of things one is um, that it's okay if you can't make it all the time don't mm -hmm. not come right. because you right. might have interruptions right. or issues right. life uh, happens. And, and you might meet someone there who drives there you know I have a student who rides his bike there even in the, in the winter but I but I also have a question um, do we have um, zoom offerings regularly are there students who have transportation issues who can participate I know we had was it Justin who was giving a class at there, there's night? an evening okay I, I believe it's going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays mm -hmm. with a young man who is a teacher of English as a right. second language and um, you can, and it's on zoom mm -hmm. right yeah so if that's what you want to do when you come in you still need to come in and right you get all the information yeah all the information yeah Wonderful. Thank you so much Thank for being you. my guest Aggie today on, our, uh, on my show. It was such a pleasure to guys have you here. It's and, great uh, to be here. It was an honor to be here yeah. on your show. And sharing your experience with all the immigrants <laughs> and international students. Thank you so much for being with us. If you are from a different country and you struggle with your English, even if you don't struggle with your English, Please come and join our community. You will not regret it. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, you will find a lot of people very friendly, uh, very open-minded. You will be connected. You will be, you'll be just happy. Um, and next week, uh, I'm hoping to talk um, to ESL students. So we will verify <laughs> if all of that was said here is true. And the fall classes will start on September 11th. 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 Yes. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for your attention. My name is Agis Rasasimo and see you soon.